Hello friends, we are continuing with working capital concepts. In this lecture, we shall discuss, we shall try to understand the working capital operating cycle. Let us see this graph. Any business organization, particularly the manufacturing organizations or processing organization, how do they operate? So they induct the cash into the business, maybe by way of bank loans, by way of their own contribution. With that cash, they purchase raw material stock. So cash is used to purchase raw material stock. Then raw material is converted into stock in process or work in prog progress. So raw material is placed into production process, into machines and it is work in progress. Once this processing is finished, then that raw material, that stock in process becomes finished goods. And when finished goods are sold, if these finished goods are sold in cash, then they directly become cash. But if these are not sold in cash, then they become debtors or debt collection or credit payments. So these becomes trade debtors or book debts, which are realized after some time. And once these are realized, then it becomes cash. So this is working capital operating cycle. We start with cash and we come back with cash. So cash is first used to purchase raw material. Raw material is converted into work in progress. Once work in progress is completed, it becomes finished goods. Finished goods, if sold on credit, then they become debtors or trade debtors or book debts. Once these debts are realized, then it again becomes cash. Now, working capital operating cycle period can also be calculated. And that period determines the level of working capital required by the business enterprise. So, let us see the same graph with period. So, cash is used to purchase raw material. Raw material is required to be kept in sufficient quantity so that the production process does not stop. So maybe the raw material may have to be kept for 35 days. In our example, we have assumed this. 35 days, it could be 45 days, it could be 15 days, it could be 90 days, depending upon from where this raw material is being purchased. So, this raw material is put into machines and machines take their own time to convert this into finished goods. In our this example, we have taken 15 days conversion period. So, this period may be 7 days, maybe 2 days, maybe 2 months. So, the amount of work in progress depends upon the production process. So, once these goods are produced and become finished goods, these cannot be sold immediately. These have to be maintained for some time. So some of finished goods are maintained some for some time. So we are assuming here that equal to 30 days finished goods, these have to be maintained in the stock. And after that, these are sold. So, we are assuming here that these are sold on credit and a 60 days credit period has been permitted. So, the recovery from the buyers will be within 60 days. Now, we can calculate the length of operating cycle. 35 days for raw material, 15 days for working 
work in progress or stock in process, 30 days for finished goods and 60 days for recovery of credit sales and total period in this case comes to 140 days. So according to our this example, the operating cycle period of this business is 140 days. Higher the period of operating cycle, higher will be requirement of working capital and lower the period of this operating cycle, lower will be the requirement of working capital. Well friends, I am sure the contents of this video would enable you to understand this concept of operating cycle in working capital. Thank you for watching the video.